Hey everybody and welcome back to episode 7 of New Windsor. So before we start, I just wanted to thank you all for suggesting names for the university that we built last episode. If you haven't checked that episode out yet, definitely do. Thank you all for suggesting names. I'll announce the name later in the episode, but we had an awesome discussion in the community section of the channel. But before we get started here, this episode we're going to be building a bridge to cross the bay. Then we're going to be building an interchange on the right side that will uh, handle some high volume city traffic and then we're going to be building a more rural interchange in the left to handle lower volume traffic so they're sort of twin interchanges but very different at the same time so let's get going with the episode All right, I'm back. So we've been working on this bridge here. We've been using a lot of different assets to make this possible. So a couple of the different assets I'm using, I'm using this bridge from Moscow that I found that I actually really like a lot. I, when I was searching for bridges in the workshop, I couldn't really find anything that I really liked that had a shape that I thought would fit for an iconic bridge at the, the, at the mouth of this bay. Other than this one, I really do like this one. It's sort of new looking, but I guess I was talking to Jay or to Bisquagelhausen about this and he said we should have a story about how this is just a brand new construction. We could possibly have a just sort of an old bridge beside this that's sort of being taken down right now. That could be a really cool idea, so tell me if you'd like that, but it's a very new looking bridge. And we also use some of Armesto's uh, bridge supports for that. Well, they're not really bridge supports, they're actually meant to be the actual bridge for, I guess, shorter bridges. Uh, but I, I thought those worked pretty well as supports. But anyway, we're getting straight into the interchange here. So, this is the interchange to the right of the, the bridge that I showed you in the overview earlier. And this interchange is going to handle a lot of high volume traffic between downtown and what will be the airport. And near the airport, I'm planning to do a lot of suburban expansion, industrial expansion, stuff like that. We've got a long way to go, a lot of different things to do in this in this series. And in terms of props right now, we're at 15,000 out of around 60,000 that we can use. So we're not in the best shape, but it could be worse. So I, I'm just going to try to be careful with props moving forward. And I keep telling myself not to detail too much, but then I just detail too much. I think I did pretty well this episode, not going crazy, and I actually figured out another method to save, like, props that I'll show you later this episode, very specific to this project, and it's a viewer suggestion, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that later when I actually start using it, but anyway, right now, we are working on these, I guess these, these on and off ramps here, so I really didn't have a vision for what I wanted this interchange to be. It ended up being a relatively symmetrical interchange at the end. I don't know what... it's some sort of crazy stack interchange. Once again, I'm very illiterate when it comes to interchanges and what kinds of interchanges are, you know, which. And apparently, the one we built near downtown was a Panavia interchange. Probably butchered the, the pronunciation on that, but... Yeah, I looked at the pictures of that kind of interchange, and it does seem like that interchange is would probably be classified as some type of uh, Panavia interchange, so uh, once again, probably butchered that pronunciation like crazy, but thank you all for, you know, telling me that in the comments. It's really awesome to have a community that can just sort of help you identify different things when you have no idea what you're doing. Just try to get these heights perfect. The thing is, like, I didn't want this interchange to be too massive or too crazy, because it's not between two highways, really. It's between a massive avenue and a main highway, I guess. But the main highway is only two lanes in each direction at this point. Which, in Providence, this highway is a solid four or five lanes in each direction when it goes across what would be this bridge. 
Most of the population is going to be concentrated near downtown. I'm going to try to do more rural neighborhoods, like away from downtown. We'll definitely get to those in the future. I, I'm trying to fill up the area near downtown first though, just so that we don't run out of props and have like a very scattered map. Next episode, we are actually going to be working very far from downtown. We're going to be working on a power plant. I think you'll really enjoy that episode. That should be out shortly. I don't know when because I've been pretty inconsistent. But yeah, this bridge, or this bridge, this interchange is done here, uh, or at least the layout of it. We'll get to the detailing later, but this is one of my best interchanges, actually. I really enjoyed uh, how this turned out, and I really like the the merge lanes onto the main avenue, because the median doesn't break, because the specific road I use. But anyway, let's get straight into the next interchange.
hopefully you guys have been enjoying this interchange build, this real world interchange build. I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out so far. Right now we're just detailing it, but before we move forward, I want to show you what this is based off of. This is based off of a pretty standard classic, uh, I believe it's a Parklo in your, well, outside of Providence. And this is the kind of interchange you see everywhere in New England, everywhere in the Northeast when two sort of highways are uh, intersecting. And yeah, I really love it. It's so classic. And somebody on Reddit said it was sort of like the Taconic State Parkway in New York, which is definitely true. You see these all over the place there. I, I know this is uh, just a two-lane highway intersecting with a two-lane road. It might not seem to make sense to have a massive Parklow interchange here. It sort of does, because when you have a lot of space like this, uh, you want to utilize it and build an interchange that works, rather than a really terrible diamond interchange that has uh, a lot of potential to get backed up easily. Alright, it's finally time to name the university, but first I wanted to show you this high-rise I placed near the waterfront to house students. I think this is a great addition here. I replaced one of the buildings we had there before with this, and I, I'm very happy with it. You need some student housing that's uh, off campus, so I think an apartment building like that would make a lot of sense. And there are a lot of newer apartment buildings in Providence and near the waterfront. But yeah, on to naming the university. So we had a lot of thoughtful suggestions like Kim Jong-un University, Trump University, Yarvard University, Hale University, whatever. You guys are insane. I finally decided on one from one of the comments, which was Hawking University, in honor of Stephen Hawking, uh, the legendary physicist, which I think is a perfect name for this university. So thank you all for participating in the experiment that was a discussion on the community section of the channel. There's going to be another discussion on the community section of the channel right now as this video is going up, uh, hopefully, which uh, will be regarding the sports team name for the university. So suggest some names there. It'd be awesome to have the name be somewhat related to Stephen Hawking in some way. So let's figure that out. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to the subscribe button to get notified whenever I upload a video so you never miss an upload and you can keep following New Windsor. So, I mean, other than that, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram to get updates and screenshots on new episodes and stuff like that. But other than that, hopefully you all enjoyed and I will see you next time.